Hello everyone, welcome to the course video for Civil 315 and my policy at University of Victoria. Today we are talking about current status and potential of clean energy in BC. Meet Dheeraj and my group mates Ryan, Tyler and Vicky. This project has been supervised by Dr. Mandy Bagheri. To begin with, we will be covering differences between different types of energy, history of energy policies in BC, BC Clean Energy Act, which is the current framework for legislation and regulations in British Columbia, and we have current status of clean energy being set by Wiki, and then potential of clean energy in BC depicted by Ryan, and then we have a few recommendations which we came up after our research. So, to start with, what's the difference between clean alternative and renewable energy? Usually these three terms are intermingled and intermixed, but there's a huge difference between them. Clean energy. Any energy created with clean or harmless sources can be termed as clean energy. For example, carbon capture. You could be burning coal for generating energy and using carbon capture storage without polluting environment and that could be regarded as clean energy. Then we have alternative energy. Using energy to replace environmental conventional sources can be termed as alternative energy which doesn't have side effects. For example, nuclear power, because it doesn't burn any conventional sources like coal. And then we have the newest and most preferred form, renewable energy. Any energy generated from natural resources that does not run out is called renewable energy. Any energy can be clean alternative, alternative or renewable, or it can be all three. For renewable energy, we have solar power as an example of renewable energy. And now I hand it over to Tyler for taking on to history of policies in BC. All right, I'm going to talk about the history of energy policies in BC. So first off, there was the BC Energy Plan, which was approved in 2002. This talked about how uh, they want to go towards low electricity rates, uh, reliable supply, and environmental responsibility. Then five years later, they revised the BC Energy Plan. Um, they had four new initiatives that showed they wanted to move towards cleaner energy in BC. So if there's any coal fire plant, coal fired plants they needed carbon capture and storage. Uh, they wanted 50% energy by conservation and zero net greenhouse gas emissions. And that brings us to the BC Energy Act, which will be the main, which I'll expand on a bit more, since it's the current act in force and it's the major focus on clean energy and sustainability. So the BC Energy Act, um, it was approved on the June 3rd, 2010. Uh, it focuses on clean energy and reducing greenhouse gases. This act identifies 16 specific energy objectives for the province. It provides BC with the guidelines to become a leader in North America in regards to producing supplying clean energy. Um, it also seeks to make BC self-sufficient in electricity generation by 2016 with a clean and renewable energy target of 93%. So from those 16 objectives, these are the main ones that they focused on, that I was gonna focus on. Uh, so ensuring electricity self-sufficiency at low rates, uh, strengthening environmental stewardship, uh, reducing greenhouse, gas, get, greenhouse gases, and hope to reduce these gas emissions to 33% below the 2007, 2007 levels by 2020 and then 80% by 2050. Um, they want to implement conservation energy methods and reduce expected increase in demand for electricity by the year 2020 and achieve this without any nuclear power. Uh, some of the imp implementations are um, installation of smart meters. This was done in 2012, uh, encouraging communities to switch to better energy sources new and increased programs and financial incentives for businesses, industry, and individuals, amendments to building codes and product, product standards to increase the efficiency of building and consumer goods, and investing in clean energy such as wind, solar, geothermal, and biomass. I'll hand over to Vicky now to talk about the current status. Thank you, Tyler. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about today, I'll go over renewable energy investment comparison. I'll talk about the percent of the grid that is clean and renewable. I'll talk about the clean energy spending comparison between the provinces. I'll go over the clean energy vehicle program, uh, just some general information, what it is. And then I'll give some examples of clean energy in BC. Okay, so the renewable energy investment comparison, the Clean Energy Act requires the provincial utility to source at least 93% of its power from clean or renewable sources. The province also has a permanent legislative ban on coal-fired power generation without carbon capture and storage. So we got the renewable energy investment comparison right here. So as you can see, Ontario is leading with $8.7 billion. We got Quebec sitting at $6.1 billion, and then we got British Columbia sitting at $5.3 billion. Uh, the percent of the grid that is clean and renewable between the provinces, we got Manitoba leading with 99.7% of its grid clean and renewable. 
We got Quebec sitting at 99, and we got British Columbia just sitting at third place at 95%. Uh, so for the clean energy spending, we got Ontario spending $5.3 billion on clean energy. We got British Columbia spending $790 million, but we got Quebec just in second place spending $1.9 billion. Just some quick facts before we get into the, the clean energy vehicle program. BC has the highest ratio of zero emission vehicles on sales to non-zero emission vehicles in Canada with over 4,800 zero emission vehicles on the road. BC also has the largest charging network in Canada with over 1,100 public level two charging stations and 30 fast charging stations. Uh, each electric vehicle on, on the road in BC displaces about four tons of uh, carbon dioxide emissions annually. Okay, so the Clean Energy Vehicle Program, what is it? BC res residents, businesses, nonprofit organizations, and local government organizations who purchase or lease qualifying new vehicles are eligible, eligible for up to $5,000 off the pre-tax sticker price. This applies to new battery electric, fuel cell electric, and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. And if you get a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, you can get up to $6,000 off. Uh, so the components of the CEV program, we've got vehicle point of sale incentives, charging infrastructure incentives, hydrogen fueling station investments, fleet incentives for adopting CEVs, and we've got research training and public outreach. So who manages the CEV program? We've got the BC, of, BC Ministry of Energy and Mines is responsible for the overall program management. They usually review and evaluate the program on an interim basis. This means it's looked at 12, 18, and 24 months with a full program evaluation at 36 months. Uh, the BC Ministry of Energy and Mines has also established incentive amounts based on vehicle type and battery capacity. So some recent news, uh, a $10.6 million program was introduced in April of 2015 and was forecasted to run for three years. However, it was due to run out in March of 2016. According to Global News, the BC government announced a $40 million boost to the Clean Energy Vehicle Program on Friday as of February 3rd, 2017. So some more examples of clean energy in British Columbia. We got the city of Nanaimo has built a 0.5 megawatt co-generation facility to convert waste to energy. In the city of Vancouver, the district heating system recovers waste heat from development's wastewater system. The city of Prince George has developed a district energy system that uses wood biomass. And the city of Surrey is planning on uh, to develop a clean technology commercialization center. Now I'll pass it on to Ryan to talk about the potential clean energy BC. All right, thanks Ricky. All right, so I'll talk to you guys about the potential for clean energy in BC. Um, BC has great potential for various different kinds of clean and renewable energy. Um, this includes the hydro, solar, tidal, wind, and various others. Um, so first, I'll talk to you guys about geothermal energy in BC. Um, BC has a great potential for this specific kind of clean energy, and that's mostly due to the fact that uh, BC and more importantly, its west coast lies on the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is basically the tectonic plate boundaries which stores this heat. Um, so basically, geothermal heat, um, energy is produced by heat that is generated and stored within the Earth itself. Um, and if done, if executed properly, it can be done without burning a single fossil fuel. And another benefit of this process is that minimal land use is needed as mostly done under the surface. All right, so uh, here's a map showing you guys where in BC we have the potential for this. Um, so yellow is moderate geothermal potential, where red's being the high geothermal potential. And as you can see along the coast, there's a lot of potential as well as into the interior. So there's a large portion of BC which has potential for this type of clean energy. All right, um, here's a figure showing you just how the process is done. Production well can extract the hot liquid from earth, convert it into steam, which can, in result, spin a turbine and generate clean electricity from this, with the cold liquid being pumped back into the ground. Um, so currently, there's no geo commercial geothermal power plant in Canada, with the first one slated to be opened in 2019 in Saskatchewan. Um, BC has the greatest potential in Canada for geothermal, and this is due to its geographical location, as I stated earlier. Um, and in BC alone, we have the potential to produce 6,600 megawatts of energy from geothermal, which is roughly up to power 50,000 homes for a year. 
All right, next I'll talk to you about uh, biomass energy. Um, so biomass energy is energy which is extracted from organic materials, um, and this was highlighted in the BC Clean Energy Act, which is why we wanted to touch on this topic. Um, biomass energy can be extracted from various types of organic materials such as soils, forestry timber waste, sewage, solid waste, agriculture crops, various others. Um, and it is a carbon neutral process, and this is due to the fact that no more carbon or CO2 will be released into the atmosphere than already absorbed by the organism throughout its lifetime. And I'll just give you a number here. 2007, BC produced upwards of 900,000 tons of wood pellets that was used for biomass energy. All right, now here's a map of Canada just showing you where biomass kind of located the pulp and paper mills as well as the wood product mills. And as you can see, a majority of them are located in the west coast here in BC. And this is due to the fact we have a large forestry sector, which is a lot of potential for biomass. So now, after doing a thorough research, we came up with a few recommendations, which we thought would be important to be looked at in future. First of all, we need a more specific Clean Energy Act for the future. With such a huge province and growing at such a fast rate, we would like to see a more specific act which governs the clean energy jurisdiction of the province. For example, the current BC Clean Energy Act says that all the thermal power plants are to be shut down and only open in case of an emergency, but it nowhere tells us what kind of emergencies are those they are talking about. Secondly, we need a revision of Clean Energy Act to be done by 2020. Again, with, with a huge rate potential of growth and rate of growth in BC in construction industrial sector, we need to see a more recent act with more current facts and figures. Also, we need to see 100% energy coming from renewable and clean energy sources in BC by 2025. And our aim is to become a renewable energy leader in the world, setting a benchmark for everyone. Canada only exports energy from large hydroelectric generation from Quebec and British Columbia to the US and generates profit. We can take this potential to a higher level and generate more revenues for the federal government by exporting more energy to the South, -South state borders. With that, we come to an end of the presentation, and I hope you liked it. Please check out this course channel for more videos which have been made by our classmates on different energy policies in BC. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please comment, like, and share. We will be putting a link for this presentation in our comments below. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching.